Well, hey guys, let me know in the comments, have you ever taken a melatonin gummy or considered taking one to get a good night's sleep? If so, you're definitely going to want to watch this video because you know, earlier this week, I went to my mailbox, trusty journal of the American Medical Association was waiting for me. And what caught my eye is a new study that came out showing that if you are taking melatonin gummies, you could be exposing yourself to 40 to 130 times the recommended amount of melatonin. In this video, I'm gonna explain why that's concerning, why you might be putting yourself at risk for serious adverse effects. What the heck does this have to do with the skin, you might ask? You little dermatologist, you, how dare you speak on things outside of skin? Listen, on this channel, I continuously emphasize that you know, aside from, of course, sun protection, getting a good night's sleep is arguably one of the best things that you can do for your skin. If not, your total body health, of course, it's good for your blood pressure, how your immune system functions, all sorts of things. But, you know, it's easier said than done to get those required seven to nine hours a night. And so a lot of people, a lot of people turn to Turn to sleep aids, including supplements aimed at sleep, many of which have melatonin. What the heck is melatonin? Melatonin is a hormone that your body produces when the lights go down. It controls your 24 hour clock, AKA your circadian rhythm and your sleep. In our modern lifestyle, we're constantly being exposed to lights, blue lights from our devices, and that can actually block the normal release of melatonin, plays a role in why we are all sleep deprived because we're staring at those screens all the time. So does taking melatonin actually help with insomnia? Poor sleep. Uh, there is some research to suggest that low doses of melatonin, anywhere from one to three milligrams, can help in certain situations. That is the key, certain situations. Melatonin in low doses for a short time can be very valuable for reducing the issues around jet lag. It also may be helpful for people who work swing shifts, although the research on that is actually kind of conflicting. People who suffer from a sleep disorder called delayed sleep wake phase, some sleep disorders in children, and maybe for the short term, it may be useful if you're someone who deals with anxiety before surgery. So those are the select conditions for which there is evidence to support using low dose melatonin. However, melatonin, it's, it's a dietary supplement. It's not a medication. Therefore, it, it's not regulated by the FDA. So it's easier to get it in front of consumers as a dietary supplement. Because so many people struggle with sleep, they're willing to turn to taking melatonin. And we have seen, ladies and gentlemen, an increase five-fold of melatonin supplement usage over the past 20 years. Why the heck did this research group even seek to test out melatonin amounts in gummies? Along with the increase in melatonin supplement use, especially around the pandemic pandemonium, a lot of people, you know, stressed out, understandably, poor sleep impacts quality of life. We know that poor sleep weakens the immune system. People want to get good sleep. They want to stay healthy, you know, ward off viral illness. Um, and so people turn to melatonin in an effort to get good sleep. We saw a huge increase in people taking melatonin and people are very willing to give it to their children. They perceive it as a dietary supplement. They think, oh, it's probably natural. It's probably safe. Uh, unfortunately, alarmingly, what we also saw during this time was a rise in calls to the U.S. Poison Control Center of children overdosing on melatonin. An increase of 530% in calls to Poison Control Center for melatonin um, overdose in children between 2012 and 2021. 27,000 visits to the ER, 4,000 children were hospitalized, 287 children have ended up in the ICU, um, and two died. So this is not, not something to take lightly. And so the researchers saw these numbers and they're like, why are kids overdosing on melatonin? So they, they tested these gummies and come to find out a lot of them have a ton of melatonin, way more than what is disclosed. Um, they ended up analyzing 25 melatonin gummies. The amount of melatonin on the label varied amongst these anywhere from 1.3 milligrams a serving to 13.1 milligrams a serving. However, the actual quantity they tested, the actual quantity ranged 
anywhere from 74% to 347% of what was labeled. Of the 25, 22 were completely inaccurate in terms of the label and what was actually tested uh, to be the case. Only three actually contained uh, within plus or minus 10% of the quantity disclosed on the label of the dose. Another thing they found out is some of these gummies, you know, they don't just have melatonin. They've got a bunch of other stuff, including CBD. So five of the products declared having CBD, when the researchers went in and tested the CBD, it was off the charts too. 104 to 118% higher CBD than what was listed on the label. Um, and of note, while the majority of these had melatonin above and beyond what was listed on the label, one supplement they tested, one gummy they tested, had no detectable melatonin in it. Is this an exclusively American issue? No. Back in 2017, Canada did a similar study testing Canadian melatonin gummies and they have the same issue. That study showed anywhere from 17% to 478% above what was declared as the quantity of melatonin in, in the supplements. Now, obviously the study, you know, it's not perfect. Uh, what supplements did they actually test? They don't disclose that. I don't know if in these studies where they go out and, and do random testing, if like, you know, for legal reasons, they don't name the brand, but I sure wish they would, right? Um, there are some issues, I guess you could point out, you know, they only tested a small amount of different brands and they only tested one gummy per brand. So you could imagine there's some batch to batch variability. You know, maybe it is a one, was a one-off thing in some of these, but that shouldn't happen, but it can, it can because whether we're talking about skincare products or we're talking about um, supplements, you know, these are not medications. So this is the kind of heterogeneity that you can get in things. You think you're getting one thing, but then in reality, you could be getting getting much more. Now, wh what's the harm in taking melatonin, right? It's, it's a hormone that's naturally produced by, by your body. Surely it's safe. Well, you know, just because it's naturally present in your body doesn't mean it's safe to take high doses of it. The research that we have to support melatonin for those limited indications that I pointed out, um, that's only in the short term. So we don't know what the, con the, the issue, we don't know what the implications of doing it on the regular long term are for your health. I mean, it's a, it's a hormone. So taking high amounts of it, you're definitely going to be influencing brain chemistry, I, I would imagine. Um, side effects reported with melatonin include fatigue, dizziness, headache. This is what was reported in the clinical trials looking at melatonin. Those side effects are more common at higher doses, but it doesn't just stop there. You can also develop stomach cramps, confusion, depression, irritability, tremors, low blood pressure, and anxiety which you know is, is, is terrible, right? A lot of people, they have a sleep problem, it makes their anxiety worse. They turn to melatonin in an effort to get better sleep. Maybe it helps in the beginning, uh, but then you know they're taking too much and they develop anxiety um, and it's a vicious cycle. The other problem with melatonin, especially at these high doses, is there's some evidence to suggest that it can uh, uh, decrease glucose tolerance, which can be a serious issue for diabetics. Um, and then, you know, we're not all the same in how our bodies handle things. For elderly adults, they're gonna be slower in metabolizing me melatonin. That can have implications lead to drowsiness. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine cautions against use of melatonin in um, those with dementia because again it can have uh, some potential impacts on cognition. Melatonin can also interfere with certain medications that you might be taking like medications that you may take for seizure disorder or if you're on blood thinner. So I always emphasize this, you know, if you're taking supplements, don't just assume, you know, oh, it's, it's harmless. Always tell your healthcare provider that you're taking them because they definitely can impact the metabolism of medications that you might be taking. And the reason this, this paper is so important is that finding that these gummies have such a high amount, you're gonna be, if you give this to a young child, you're gonna be giving them anywhere from 40 to 130 times the recommended dose. And that's, that's a lot for a child. We don't know 
what the heck that's going to do to children. Remember, melatonin is a hormone. You know, it could have serious adverse effects. And that's illustrated by the fact that we're seeing an increase in calls to poison control center. Now, we don't know if those calls to the poison control center were the result of the kids just getting the serving size of melatonin gummies or if what I suspect happened is gummies look like candy. This is another thing. I've always had problems with gummies because they taste good and because they taste good, they're very tempting to children and they think they're candy. I mean, they're easy to mistake for candy. And so you can imagine that they can overdose on, on them, especially if they have such a high amount to begin with. For children, the FDA has approved CBD for refractory seizures in children with this very rare genetic disorder. But aside from that, otherwise healthy children, there's no reason to be giving them CBD that is evidence-based. And we don't know the long-term safety, let alone at these very high doses. You know, across all of my videos, whether I'm talking about skin, whether I'm talking about hair, whether I'm talking about nails, any kind of ailment of the body, body system, you gotta know what the root cause is. You've gotta know the diagnosis. And here is where I see a real problem with melatonin supplements, is that people turn to them and put off getting a proper medical evaluation for what is actually going on and causing their sleep problems. And this can be deadly. Again, first of all, taking a step back, sleep, you know, poor sleep, it impacts your cognition can put you at risk for car crashes. I mean, it's serious. It's, it's serious and life-threatening to be sleep deprived. But there are certain underlying sleep disorders and problems with sleep for which melatonin is not appropriate. Um, and there are things that need to be addressed, fixed, corrected. Very common to deal with obstructive sleep apnea. You need a CPAP if you've got that. And it can be deadly to continue on with untreated sleep apnea. It can be deadly. Uh, causes your blood pressure to go very high, puts you at risk for all sorts of heart problems, uh, you know, stroke, etc. You know, I always point this out too, because um, something I struggled with when I was a child um, is people who have a diagnosis of eczema, coming back to skin, they have disrupted sleep because they have these arousals throughout the night of their skin causing itch. And so they're constantly, you know, want, having these low level uh, awakenings that they're not really aware of that are disrupting their sleep. And children, who go through this, they often can get misdiagnosed as having like a learning disability or attention problem when in reality, it's their skin disease impacting their sleep. So if the skin disease is controlled and, and calmed down, they can get good quality sleep, then they can start focusing better in school and whatnot. So for consumers, they, they'll end up putting off a proper evaluation uh, because they take these melatonin supplements. They could be exposing themselves to very high amounts of it. And we don't know the long-term safety implications of even taking it at the low doses that are recommended, let alone at these ultra high doses. Now, I wanna make it clear, this study did not look at a full spectrum of all of the available melatonin supplements out there. I mean, that's a lot, there are tons. I mean, the, the supplement industry is huge. They only looked at a handful of these gummies. So if you are going to take a melatonin supplement, I highly suggest talking to your healthcare provider first. If you're considering it for your child, 100% myself and the American Academy of Sleep Medicine strongly encourage parents to discuss with their child's pediatrician healthcare provider before giving um, a melatonin supplement. Um, and if you have decided with your provi healthcare provider that this is appropriate for you, um, how do you know you're getting something reputable? I always recommend looking for third-party verification, the USP seal, um, third-party testing to verify that what is on the label is actually what is in the product. As it stands now, I would stay away from gummies, especially if you are a parent, because again, I think they look like candy, they look tasty, it's easy to overdose, and we do see cases of children overdosing on, on melatonin, and it can land them in the hospital, ICU, and even 
you know, in those two situations, death, unfortunately. Melatonin in these supplements is not natural. Yes, it's naturally produced in your body as part of your circadian rhythm, but not at this high level. And newsflash, the melatonin in these supplements, it's synthetic. They're making it in a lab. The other complaint I hear a fair amount is doctors do not treat the root cause. They just prescribe, prescribe, prescribe. Um, I'm sure that's true in some cases. Honestly, I, you know, I'm sure there are docs out there, but by and large, you know, that's not, that is not the way of medicine. And I've got to tell you, when it comes to sleep disorders, go in the melatonin route. You're bypassing the root cause. Uh, by skipping out on seeing your healthcare provider, they could identify what the root cause of your sleep problem is. And newsflash, in the vast majority of cases of sleep problems, insomnia, the first line treatment is not medication, it's behavioral modifications. Seeing a healthcare provider, getting the right diagnosis, and then being given tools of how you can modify your lifestyle to get your sleep back on track. That's the tricky thing when it comes to sleep is implementing those behavioral pieces of turning off your devices before bed, uh, you know, not eating a large meal, all of those sleep hygiene things. They're a pain, honestly, they're a pain to do especially when our modern lifestyle has, you know, there's so many demands, they're hard. You, you honestly, you have to put the work in, in a lot of cases to, to reap the benefits of, of actually ensuring that you get the right amount of sleep. It's, it's unfortunate that we have to try so hard to do something that should be so natural, but it is, it is a reality. And I can't emphasize enough to you guys, if you are struggling with sleep, please see your healthcare provider. Uh, that way you can get the right diagnosis. Don't just turn to melatonin supplements. In some cases you could be putting yourself or you know, your children in, in harm. Uh, let me know what you think guys. Uh, I hope this video was informative to you. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.